Hi world, it's the 19th of February. It's about 2 p.m., 2.15 p.m. UK time in the afternoon. I'm going to be starting a new beginner's course in astrology, teaching students uh, in about 10 days time. Um, just to get the advertising plug in, there's going to be five modules. Module one will be on the signs and, and the meaning of the sun, moon, ascendant and midheaven in each of the signs and houses. Module two will be on the individual planets, looking at the planets in each sign and house. Module three will be on the aspects between planets. Each of these first three beginners modules will have six to seven weeks. The fourth module will be on the intermediate, that's the auxiliaries that we use, such as midpoints, astrocartography, the north node, synastry, things like this. And the fifth module, the advanced module, will be based on the use of transits and progressions and how to actually work with these influences. And at the end of the day, anyone who takes this course, whilst there's no certification, should be able to go away and um, interpret their own horoscope and hopefully help others understand their horoscopes as well. So this is all starting in about 10 days time. I've still got plenty of slots left. I'm, I'm doing very well with it. But there's still plenty of slots left, so if you're interested, drop me an email at steve at stevejudd.co. But doing this, in this last few days, I was thinking about this, I was thinking, well, when I first started studying astrology, I just went and bought loads of old textbooks. I mean old textbooks, 1930s, 1920s. I bought Astrology for All by Alan Leo, written around 1905, 1906. And in that, Alan Leo set out the four basic rules for astrology as it was at that time. And, yeah, things have changed. Things have changed. So I thought to myself, well, what is it, what, what is it, what does it mean to be an astrologer in 2020s? What actually is astrology in the 2020s? What's it for? How is it best used? So I've been pondering this for a few days and I've got no idea what I'm about to say, but this is my best take on it. It's just going to fall out my mouth, I hope. So what is astrology these days in the 2020s, in the computer revolution? Astrology is a system with symbolic representation of understanding the energies of the planets in our solar system in their angular relationships with each other and defining those relationships in terms of behavioural patterns. Astrology is a way of understanding ourselves, each other and the world we live in in a way that is outside and beyond that of conventional orthodox education, rationality or analysis. Astrology is not logical or rational, yet neither is it exclusively psychic or intuitive. To be an astrologer in the 2020s, it really helps if you're computer savvy, because the programs are online. But you still need to be able to draw a horoscope by hand, otherwise you're not an astrologer. That's, that's in my book, anyway. Um... But what is astrology? How is it defined in the 21st century? Astrology is a mixture of geometry, mathematics, psychology, and intuition. And as you age, also a degree of self-awareness. Without these things, you can't do it. It's all very well just doing the maths and the geometry and it's all very well being the intuitive and the psychological but if you can't blend them you're not going to be able to do astrology, simple as that. But I've not met anyone who can't do astrology, ever. Everyone's capable of it. So what is it? It is a system of understanding oneself. It is a way of defining the changing boundaries of the world we live in, around us, in us, on us, through us. And it is a way of making objective, detached and impersonal sense of the craziness of the world we live in. What's it for? Astrology in the 2020s 
is becoming more and more valuable for a number of different reasons. First, primarily, the purpose of astrology is for us to be able to look at ourselves in a way that is separate, objective, detached and impersonal. To be able to analyse ourselves from a psychological perspective and to be able to gain a detached viewpoint of what of our own nature. Thus giving us the tools to work with ourselves, to improve ourselves, to become better human beings. And if that's not a good purpose for life, I don't know what is. Secondly, what is astrology for? It's a way of not us just making sense of the world around us, but a way of balancing our own position in the outside world and adapting our behaviour to the ever-changing times we live in to maximise our influence, our efficiency and our effectiveness. Astrology is very good for spotting long-term cycles, whether those cycles are in our own behaviour, in economics, in politics, in warfare, in environmentalism. And to quote Alan Leo, last and least, astrology is also a very good tool for prognostication, for forecasting, not prediction, forecasting. At the end of the day, certain tenets of astrology that have been around since millennia still hold true. The microcosm is reflected in the macrocosm. As above, so below, and particularly the planets impel, not compel. With those tenets taken on board, the more you understand about astrology and thus yourself and your own nature and the nature of the world around you, the more you can change your behaviour to maximise the potential you have. This can manifest in some cases as forecasting. And anyone who tells me they can predict the future is either a genuine psychic and I only know one or two of them, or a liar. But you can forecast. Forecasting doesn't always get it right. But it does most of the time. And when you forecast for yourselves, or even better for other people, you can help, you can empower other people. As an astrology, you can catalyze other people into becoming better inside themselves. With many people, being better inside themselves means having better relationships or making more money or having a better job or living in a better home. And I think that that's kind of missing the point. I often say to people, you can't be in a good relationship with anyone else until you're first of all in a good relationship with yourself. So working on oneself is a, absolute prerequisite and yes all the other things are lip service they come on they go how should astrology be used with the advent of the internet there are now thousands of so-called astrologers out there with their own channels using various different platforms and most of them are sickeningly awful. Sorry, but they are. Because all they talk about is where are you going to find your soulmate? When are you next going to have sex? How you can make your millions? And it's all based on the individual isolating themselves and becoming more powerful as opposed to power filled. Most of these. I call them the pretty young things. Wouldn't recognise psychology if it came towards them without any disguise at all. Um, having said that, whilst on the surface a lot of people will become disenchanted with the superficiality of what they see as the vacuous side of astrology out there, which of course is just another extension of 30 years ago, which was the newspaper sun sign columns, it will provoke, promote people into looking for deeper meaning. And all it takes is the odd sentence for them to think, oh, I need to explore that a bit more. That resonates. And then they come to a proper astrologer, someone who's been studying at least, at least 20 years. 
I mean, I'm a practicing astrologer. I do readings for people, even though I've got a massive waiting list, and I will get to everyone at some stage in the future, honest. It's just taking time. Um, but really, astrologos, knowledge of the stars, the idea of being able to connect heaven and earth, to be able to realize that we are the interface between above and below, and that as that interface, we can intermediate, we are the intermediaries between the will of the heavens and the will of the earth. There is something magical about this. And the more you search for the alchemy between above and below, both in the world and in ourselves, the more you can actually tune in to that magical essence that gives you a, an understanding of the reality of what you're really dealing with. And it makes you realise how insane this world is with its constructs and its order and its logic. But the magic is still there and that can never be eliminated. And that's what I'm trying to imbue my students with. The idea of how becoming more empowered, catalyzing themselves and in time learning to catalyze others into becoming more power filled, better human beings, or as I prefer to call them, humans being. On that note, if you want to come to my course, you're most welcome. Catch you later, world. Bye.